everyone and welcome to a new episode of Let's Lock. In this one, we want to wrap up Women's History Month with a very interesting conversation and roundtable on the meaning of being a woman in today's gaming and localization industries. For this, we have gathered, we have gathered three amazing and passionate women that every day inspire us with their commitment and passion for what they do so they can share their experiences on how they came into the industry, what the challenges are, what has changed um, and what the future holds for everyone. So please welcome Monica de la Valle, Global Program Manager, Kahui Teo, Global Localization Manager, and Kiara Straki, Audio Service Line Manager. Welcome, ladies. Hello. Hello. Okay, so uh, to start with uh, the conversation, I would like to ask you, how did you all get into the gaming and into the localization industry? So Monica, can I you start? Yes, I'll start. So I think I had a, a slightly different uh, uh, approach to, and it was by chance. So I started as a localization uh, tester, LQA, in LQA. So, uh, and then I moved uh, uh, to localization within uh, the game development. So, um, and, uh, and then uh, I loved it and I managed to have a career in uh, localization and in, video, in the video game industry. Yeah, for me too, it was a kind of chance. Um, I was already working in localization, but in a completely different uh, industry. And I, I was offered a, a job in game and I really didn't know such an industry existed, <laughs> that there were opportunities out there. And indeed, I was saying to myself, let's give it a try for maybe a year, you know, a temporary job. But then I stayed on because I had so much to learn and so much to discover. And I, I liked it a lot. I, I know, Kau, you also get there by chance, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yes, yeah. it was a mid-career switch for me. Uh -huh. uh, I wanted to be a freelance translator. So I had my uh, pro profile posted on a site, but I was invited um, to apply for a position in electronic arts. So I started at the, as a localization project coordinator. And then slowly, actually not slowly, but I moved through the ranks quite okay. And here I am today. Uh, I think the, the amazing thing was that I didn't know about this industry, similar to Kiara. I didn't think at a point uh, that I could have a career in this industry itself. Yes. Yeah, it was the same for me. I, I didn't know at all. And also, um, at the time, uh, uh, the video games uh, were something just for boys in a way. And uh, so when every time I was saying that I was a localization tester for video games uh, or I was working in, in the video game industry, everyone was very surprised. Uh, like, uh, what are you doing in there? <laughs> so, yes, it was... Um, Talking about the uh, challenges in our career, like um, it was, uh, we're talking about, uh, 50, I think for all of us, around 15 years ago, um, working in video games uh, or in localization for video games was something uh, still uh, uh, as a novelty a bit. Mm -hmm. And I found myself uh, as I progressed in my career to be the only woman in the room in every meeting and uh, try to make my point across, uh, trying to be heard uh, and to do, try to put my ideas as well uh, out there. So, so that, that was challenging as well, to, to build a, a sort of uh, a, your knowledge, but also uh, to, to, to be heard in uh, what you wanted to say in, uh, in video games. How, how was it for you, Chiara? Well, yes, as you say, I think 15 years ago, the industry was different. Probably it was a, also a newer one, a newly born one. And now it's more mature. I see there are more women and more opportunities for women. But I think it also depends on the era, area where you're working with. So maybe localization, it's a bit more a female, let's say, business, while um, I, I still don't see many women in development, uh, like producers or art, I would like to see more of them and more, more managers. 
Yes, I, I, I agree with Kiara. I think when we first started, um, when I first started in the industry, well, in localization, you have a slightly more balanced gender mm -hmm. ratio. But then we had engineering as well. We have the QA team where there were a lot more males. In fact, the engineering team were all females. <laughs> and except for the managers are female. We're, we're all males and the manager is a female. But I think the, the main uh, evolution, as I see for the industry, is that uh, more and more women are challenging uh, this um, you know, perception that programming is more for the guys or they cannot be uh, good testers because they are not good at uh, playing the game. So this is one um, area that I see has changed. Well, for me, the main challenge when I started in the industry was around that time that I started having children. So the work-life uh, balance part was a bit tough, uh, especially when you are a project manager trying to work across time zones, pulling things together in Asia, as well as communicating with Europe. Uh, that uh, you know put a stress on your on your family life. So I, I wonder from Monica how you manage that. <laughs> yes, I think uh, as well uh, to to have a family uh, and working video games, especially on the development side, uh, um, has always been challenging even for men because um, they were uh, from, um, like a time crunch time where everyone mm -hmm. needed to be there. So luckily also my husband works in the video game industry. So <laughs> so we 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 try to divide uh, our roles but I think like uh, something can be done by companies uh, as well. Yeah. I, I've seen some companies uh, taking time to um, arrange crests uh, in, the, in the company or to give uh, longer paternity leaves. So, so it's a structural change that needs to happen uh, to, to make sure that everyone has uh, access uh, um, to a career in video games. Uh, so, uh, and it's a long way, but. Um, I've seen a lot of changes, especially in the last two years, um, for uh, women and girls in uh, in and in video games, like managing to have entry roles. But what I'm not seeing mm -hmm. yet uh, are roles at a um, senior senior level, so senior management, director level. So we. We are hoping to be role models for um, for girls and women in the industry, but it's still a long way because uh, we are not represented. The, rep the representation is still very limited. So. Yeah, and you know what? I think also there is still, since we are all working in localization, and as we were chatting other times, uh, language matters. And I, I think that the management style, the language we use, the way we do business, many times is still very male centric. So I, I think we really have to, what I would like to do, you know, in my work around me uh, with, with managers, with uh, women and men, it's really promoting another way of doing business, of managing. Uh, people and managing, uh, you know, the the the, the assets. Because I, I really think there is still still a way to go there. I still think there is a very uh, male oriented do, way of doing business. I don't know if you if you know what I mean. Uh, I, I words I, matter. <laughs> yes. I agree with Chiara because uh, I have encountered um, you know situations where. Uh, the way certain messages were delivered, uh, we, we, we don't know, are they making excuse for us women? Are they putting us down or are they being considerate when they, are, they seem to be trying to help? But uh, one thing that I try to do on, on my side, you know, to sort of encourage um, women in the industry, you know, the less represented genders, uh, to be able to speak up when they feel uh, like they have they can contribute positively to uh, something as well as uh, speak up when they don't agree or they're uncomfortable in mm -hmm. some uh, instructions that were given to them, some policies that they feel are you know, against them rather than helping them with their careers. I think this is something that I consciously try to be aware of, to listen more to them. And of course, I same as Monica, 
try to um, stand up as a role model, uh, someone who speaks up, because at the minimum we can do is that we promote um, this type of a open communication with uh, the other gender that we need to be heard, we need to be included. Yeah. Yes. And I think this is really this is really nice. So being a mentor, and I don't know if it happened to you the same way. So if you have a mentor, if you have someone uh, believing in you during your career, this is so important. So you you feel uh, you can overcome the issues and the challenges about you know work life balance, about being maybe the only woman in the group, or to have your voice heard. And mentorship, I think it's a really, really important uh, thing. So if we manage to be mentor for someone else, for other women, I think it's it's um, it's really important. Yeah, and uh, that's why, um, for instance, from my side, I, um, last year I started to, to be a Women in Game ambassador as well as Kehui. So uh, just trying to uh, to take part to some initiatives uh, uh, that are aimed to create a network for young women or any or all women uh, in the video game industry uh, to, to be able to feel supported, to be able to have um, someone to talk to about uh, not only the entry level, their career, or the difficult situation they might encounter in, in the in the journey into the video game industry. And also, <clears throat> um, there are uh, lots of initiatives for women in localization as well. And there are um, regional chapters in uh, uh, a lot of countries. So uh, there are initiatives out there, and we can be active and, uh, mm -hmm. as Chiara said, uh, try to mentor other women and uh, open uh, the, the way um, to this amazing industry because there is room for everyone. So that's what I feel. <laughs> to Monica, I became an ambassador for Women in Games was uh, to work more on encouraging ladies to speak up, especially those in the APEC region, because we have less of a presence here and there is a cultural perception, stronger cultural perception um, you know, that view women negatively as if they are not suitable for this industry. So this is something that we are trying to change and trying to, you know, draw the girls out. We have made progress in the past uh, 10 years since, you know, the time we joined the industry to what it is today. But I think there's still a long way to go. So for my, my wish, my wish for the immediate future is... Um, I hope uh, ladies in um, the region, APEC region, especially Asian countries, um, where they are culturally more conservative, that they can stand up, they can be proud of their career in this industry. At the same time that uh, even if they don't have family support, we as their peers can support them. And uh, I, I hope that they will not, when they speak up for themselves, they will not be viewed as uh, overly feminist, you know, and and be um, perceived negatively. I think at the minimum, we just want to be respected. We just want to be heard. I, well, Chiara, do you have the same feeling about this in Europe, for example? Um, well, yes, I think it's uh, it's a bit the same in the whole world, but maybe for uh, Europe and the Americas, uh, there has been a bit more progress, I think. I don't know, Monica, if you have the same feeling. Yes, uh, I, I think we <clears throat> we are trying uh, uh, yes to to speak up m uh, much more than before. Uh, so um, also inside our industry, but also uh, there are a lot of companies now um, more conscious about what is uh, gender bias to avoid that uh, during the recruitment process. And so there are a series of initiatives and we need to promote them. We need to be part of them. So to, to make those changes. And the last thing as well that I wanted to mention and we talked about uh, in, in the past is how a game localization can influence uh, a, this discussion 
in the games. So mm -hmm. uh, when uh, we see what a game developer wants to do with a game, uh, we can give feedback uh, saying that something uh, we can do a sensitivity check and uh, uh, give our feedback that uh, a character in the game is behaving in a way that is not acceptable. It's not acceptable anymore uh, to have uh, sexism, uh, racism uh, in video games. So we can give feedback uh, uh, through the language as well, uh, because uh, word matter. And I, I feel that we it's our duty to raise uh, those issues with everyone. So, so uh, I'm happy that uh, we have a small part in this uh, process as well. OK, well, that was, that was great. Thank you all for, for your very, very interesting insights. I, I enjoyed it uh, very much. I think we're over the time. We've been already 15 minutes here. I wish we could uh, speak a little bit more, but I would want to wrap up this conversation with uh, with you telling us and the viewers what would your personal goal be for maybe this or the next year, or what what would you want to see if you could change something right now just by saying it? What would that be? Monica, you start. Too little time. <laughs> there is a, so I um, I would like to see a change in uh, people being toxic in video games and uh, stop uh, harassing girls for being gamers and uh, and uh, playing games because that actually put obstacles for women to go into the video game industry. So I'm very committed to, to this topic and they try to raise awareness of uh, uh, toxicity. I would like to see more inclusive uh, behaviors and an inclusive way of telling it very shortly. So an inclusive uh, environment for women in, uh, in gaming and in localization. For me, I would like this conversation to continue beyond the month of March. I know this is uh, the, the month of International Women's Day is Women History Month. So there are a lot of conversations surrounding, you know, gender equality in games, uh, diversity and inclusion in games. But this conversation needs to carry on and it should not only involve women. We need men at the table. We need diverse genders at the table. And we should continue this conversation throughout the year. Sure. sure. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Well, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Kiara. And thank you, Kahui, thank so you. much for having shared your thoughts uh, with us today. I hope, uh, hope you like being here. I hope everyone enjoyed the conversation. And as Kahui said, and I think we all uh, think, we need to continue this conversation beyond March and, and make this a, an everyday thing. So thank you so much again for being here. And we'll see each other in the next episode of Let's Talk.